For this first lesson, we're going to talk about three measurements as well as how to determine how they change. We have velocity, which is uh, another way of saying speed. It's very similar to speed. It's how quickly an object is moving or, uh, or uh, the rate at which its position is changing. We'll also deal with a couple of different types of time as well as uh, what is the third one, position. Now these are all words we're common using. However, since we're going to be using these in a very mathematical fashion, we have to be very accurate the way we describe these. Velocity is the rate of change of an object's position. Time. We have a couple different times that we're going to talk about. The first one is instant or instantaneous. I am this. Instant time. This one can be thought about as a clock reading. Like at a specific time, like right now, at a specific time. I could look at a clock and I will only get one series of numbers that describes what time it is right now. You can think about it as a specific time. Let me change my writing utensil. We also have something called time period which is the span of time. It's, it's a length of time. It's something you might measure with a stopwatch. It's not one time, like at a specific time of day. It's a length of time. We can better describe this as the, uh, the amount of time between two, uh, let me change that real quick, between two, instance of time okay last uh, lastly position this one's actually the way you would think it is it's just a way of uh, it is a, it's a location it's where an object is described in that sense and if we talk about how these things change all these quantities can change uh, time if we look at a clock and we set an object next to it we look at this clock and it's got a, an hour hand and a minute hand and next to this clock is a cell phone. Okay. This cell phone is existing at a specific time. All right, if we go back millions and millions of years, cell phones weren't around. Um, but right now, if we wanted to say when is this cell phone, we could look at a clock and we could allocate a specific time to it. If this clock ended up, or I'm sorry, if this watch, if the uh, Cell phone. If the cell phone ends up doing something, say moving to the right, we can say at a specific time it is right here. We might say that that's 8, 31, and 19 seconds. It then travels for a while and it stops and it's over here at a different clock reading. We'll get a different minute and hour hand. And over here maybe it's at 8, 31, and 55 seconds. Right. We notice that at each point the cell phone existed at a different time. Initially, it existed at this time. Now, at this location, it's existing at this time. To find out, oh, by the way, these two times that are listed here, this time and this time, these are instant times. They're specific times. To find out the time period or the amount of time between these two events, all we do is we take the final time minus the initial time, and that will give us the time period. All right, the time period. So if we take the final time, this over here was the second time or the final time. This was when our measurements were stopped being made. We can say it's the final time is equal to 8, 31, 55. And that the starting time or the initial is 8 31 19. Now if we want to find this time period we subtract these. We take our final time which is 8 31 55 subtract it from 8 31 19 and we would find out that our answer is about 55 minus 19 mm -hmm. 36 seconds seconds so the amount of time it took for this object to get from here 
to this location up here was 36 seconds. That was the time period that the, that the cell phone was traveling. Now, to find the change in any of these quantities, it's done the exact same way. But instead of using this awkward clock time, let's think about it in a different way. If we take the same cell phone at this time here, let's assume we were measuring it in something like a stopwatch time. We could say that the initial time that this thing started at, if we look at a stopwatch, we would say that it starts at zero seconds. We start it, the object starts moving, gets to another location. Over here, the clock might read 36 seconds. Now, in this case, this is what stopwatches are designed to do. It's easy to see that this object traveled for 36 seconds. But we can use the same method that we used down below to calculate in the same way. The final time was 36 seconds. The initial time was uh, 0 seconds since we started at it when it was 0. And we subtract these two, final 36 minus 0 is once again 36 seconds. And we can do this for all of the different uh, changes for all these measurements. Come up here and I get a new window. No, I don't want to save it. We take uh, the, uh, what was next? The position of an object. You travel along a highway. At some point along this highway, you're going to start to see mile markers off the side. One might read, you know, 60 miles. The next one might read 60.2 miles. And as you're traveling in your car from one location to another, at each point in time, you're at a specific position. As we took a picture of this car, pretend it's an overhead picture, we looked on the car, we see it is at the 60 mile marker. This is a way of describing its position. It's the same way as saying you're at your home, or you are in the car, or you are at the mall. It's where the object is. And we're using a number system to describe where this object is. It's much like a number line. If you consider a number line, and I have this number line, and this is a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and I draw a star here. And I ask us, where is that star? You might say it's at the 1, 2, 3, 4. It's at the 5 position. Same way with the mile markers on the road. The 60 mile marker says you're at the 60 miles. This is a way of describing your position or your location. As the car drives from one position to another, if we want to find out how much its position has changed, we use the same problem. The change in anything is the final minus the initial. That equal the change. All right. In this case, the final position, it ended up over here at this marker, 60.2 miles. Minus the initial position was 60 miles. So the change in position was 0 0.2 miles. If you're looking at the state of Illinois, oh geez, let me try and draw this. Trust me, I'm from Illinois. There, go, Illinois. And over here we got Missouri. Uh, I don't know about either of these. But anyway, somewhere around here, St. Louis, and then Alton, Illinois. As you're crossing a road from one, uh, from one state to another, what you'll do is as you intersect them, you'll see a sign on the side of the road that says, Welcome to whichever state you're going to. Now, the next sign you will see somewhat down the road This one down here will say maybe 0 0.1 miles. The next one way, way down the road will say 0 0.2 miles. If we count backwards, the 0 0.2 miles, the 0 0.1 miles, even though it doesn't say it, this sign here can thought, be thought about as a 0, 0.0 mile marker. Or much like the stopwatch time, if we look at it in a different manner, look at our current position as being the 0 position, a lot of times it's easier to determine the amount of distance of something. If I drive from where I am now, just crossing the state border into Illinois, and I go out to the 0 0.2 mile marker, my final position is 0 0.2 miles. My initial, where I start from, is 0. Now in this case, once again, it's much easier to calculate. 0 0.2 miles minus 0 is 0 0.2 miles. And this is how we calculate change position. If we can find a way to allocate numbers to the position, much like treat objects like a number line, you can do this anywhere. If you take, a, say, a classroom that has a big teacher's desk in the front and a lot of little desks out in here in the public generation, and you say, this wall, I'm going to say this wall is my starting location. 
And I'm going to take a tape roller and I'm going to let it sit down across the entire room. Somewhere along that tape measure, it will say one meter. Somewhere along that tape measure, it will say two meters. Somewhere along tape measure, yada yada, it will say three meters. And you can use this as ways describing a location. If I, Mr. Teacher Man, starts up here at the front, and I walk towards the back of class to this point here, how much has my position changed? Well, my initial position was one meter. My final position was three meters. So how much had my position changed? Change is always final minus initial. So in this case, the final three minus initial one, I have just traveled two meters. Or my change in position is two meters. All right. Now, lastly, actually not lastly, we got two more quick things to cover. Okay. Velocity. You guys can see how this goes. If I look at velocity, let's say uh, there's a wave of light. Uh, someone opens up the window, or the shutters come up, and a bunch of these, a bunch of light starts screaming in from the window, and it hits this back wall. Actually, light's a bad example. Light always travels the same speed. Up. Oh. Rewind. Let's use uh let's use an electron or uh yeah let's use an electron a negative charged particle and it gets really close to a, another electron. Initially, this electron is traveling with a certain velocity. Velocity is a lot like speed. If it starts out with a speed of four times ten to the fifth meters per second, and due to the repulsion between the electrons, this being its initial speed. It speeds up, and its final velocity, due to the repulsion, is 6 times 10 to the 5th meters per second. Right. If I asked how much its velocity has changed, hopefully no one would say 6, .5, 6 times 10 to the 5th meters per second. To find the change, it is final minus initial equals the amount of change. Or in this case, the final 6 times 10 to the 5th minus 4 times 10 to the 5th, that's 4, equals 2 times 10 to the 5th meters per second. Okay. Now the last thing to note here is that since this equation is always final minus initial, it is possible for, well, let me show you. Imagine this electron was traveling the opposite way. Here's one electron, another electron, and the second one is traveling towards the first. Let's give it the same initial velocity. Let's say it was initially going at 4 times 10 to the 5th meters per second. Now, since these things repel each other, this electron is going to push back on that first electron that's traveling to the left. Because of that, it's going to slow it down. Its final velocity will be something slower, maybe 3 times 10 to the 5th meters per second. Let's find out how much the velocity here has changed. It seems that there's a difference in 1 here, so the velocity has changed 1. If we take final minus initial, the final being 3 times 10 to the 5th minus the initial, um, I keep forgetting units, the initial is 4 times 10 to the 5th meters per second. You'll see that the answer is not 1, but in this case, negative 1 times 10 to the 5th meters per second. This negative is something that does not need to be ignored. This is something that will prove to be very useful for us. So as you're doing these calculations, if you get a negative number, that is useful information. Don't just ignore it. Next lesson, we'll talk about what that negative means. Okay, have a good day.